Like this scientist can now transform stress into electricity. It's like me, <laughs> total electricity because you're really stressed. Oh. Let's do an example here. So we have a circuit with the uh, um, overall potential difference here is 10.0. In other words, this right here is the PD around the uh, battery uh, for the whole circuit here. And then we're told we've got this point A and B. We've got these resistors like this, and we have this weird setup like this. So the idea is, for step one, is going to be to find what's the total equivalent resistance at the battery. In other words, if you, our goal then should be to redraw this whole thing so there's only one resistor. And we'll figure out what that value would be. So I think maybe step one would be, let's deal with, for example, the series part. Let's maybe just deal with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on this piece right here. So in other words, uh, let's see. What's the equation for total equivalent resistance in series? It goes RS equals, well, it's just R1 plus R2. Now, we only have two of them, so it's that. In our case, then, what would you say? I would say then RS, the total equivalent resistance of the series part at least, will be just R plus R, which is just equal to 2R. So what does this mean? Well, uh, first of all, I think that was pretty important here just to know that piece. And let's see, that means we could have actually redrawn this circuit as this. So I'm just going to show you how I could redraw this circuit now as something that goes like this. There's just a single resistor now I'm going to draw. And then there's another single resistor here. Okay, great. And it goes back up. And what are these values here? This one here will be 2R, and the other one is still R. So see, I've simplified this a little bit. Now let's go one step further then. Let's actually do uh, the parallel part because that's now what we have. We have a parallel circuit now. If you look at it carefully, this is a place where if you're one coulomb of charge, if you're a student, you know, coming around this one right here, for example, in that analogy, that means you either pass through here and then go back up, or you go over here and you decide to pass through the lower part and then go back up. So this is your choice here. So in parallel, let's remember what we do here. We say that 1 over RP, this is the equation we get in our data booklet, equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And we would keep going if we had more, but we only have two of them. So here's where it gets a little bit sneakier. That means I have to say 1 over RP is going to equal, let's see, the first one is 1 over 2R. The second one is just 1 over R. Now, how do I deal with this? You have, to, you have to remember how to add two fractions with an uncommon denominator. So what do you do then? You get them both over the same denominator, if you remember to do that. So I'm going to make them both over 2R. So that means the second one also has to be over 2R. Well, the first one's already over 2R. So 2R times what gives you 2R? Well, just 1. So 1 times 1 is just 1. It stays the same. However, this next one. To get from R to 2R, what do I do? I have to multiply by 2. That means I got to multiply the top. Then what's 1 times 2? It's 2. Okay, so let's keep going then. That means we have 1 over RP then is going to equal, let's see. Now that I have a common denominator, I can uh, put the 2R on the bottom. And 1 plus 2 is 3. Now your answer, be very, very careful. The answer is not 3 over 2R. That's what 1 over RP was. I got to figure out what RP actually is. Okay, so I got to figure out this value. So what is RP? Well, that's me flipping the whole thing. So if I want to do 1 over RP, you know, I have to do 1 over that to get this by itself. That means I got to flip this as well. That means it's going to be 2R over 3. And it turns out that's going to be my answer because it turns out if I figured that out, then I've basically redrawn my circuit to just be one single resistor. Um, like this right here, for example. There it is, like this. And like this, I've basically just redrawn it. And what's its value? Its value is 2R over 3. So that I could say that my total equivalent resistance then is just going to be R equals, well, I could say the total equivalent resistance, actually. I'll just say it's 2R over 3. That's going to be my answer. Okay, so we've solved the first part here. That is the total equivalent resistance. In other words, the battery is behaving as if there's a single resistor of value 2R over 3. See, that wasn't so simple. That's why I think it's important to do these. Now, in part B, I just redrew the circuit here so it's simpler to look at from before. What's the potential difference across A and B? What that means is, what if I had a voltmeter that measured this right here? So I had a voltmeter connected here and here. You know, I've connected it right there. So I'm going to measure the difference in chocolate. 
uh, if I'm using my analogy here. So that means um, if I imagine, this is the, the really important part is just imagine you are a coulomb of charge and imagine which which path you're going to take. So for example, if I go this way and then I go down, then I go like this. Okay, imagine that's the path that you take. By the way, you're going to come back up through this way. And the question is, which way are you going to take? Are you going to take the upper way or the lower way? You could take either. Now, I only care about the upper way because that's the one between A and B. In other words, if I connected my voltmeter here, what would this one measure? That's what I'm really looking for. Well, if I followed this path then, you know, if that's the path that I chose to take, remember from my analogy what this means. That means that, um, let's say you came in, you're a student right here, and you gained 10 pieces of chocolate here. And so, okay, you've got 10 pieces of chocolate you have to use up. And that means if you go down here, then what do you do? If you only pass through these two resistors over here, you're probably going to eat, well, how many pieces of chocolate here are you going to eat? You're probably going to eat half of them here and half of them here in order to go over here. In other words, this one right here will be 5 volts here. This one right here will be 5 volts. Um, but we weren't asking for that. Had we asked, hey, what's the potential difference across this particular one right here? Sure, that'd be 5 volts. This one would also be 5 volts. But remember what we're asking. We're just asking for, hey, what's the potential difference across A and B? In other words, if you come in right here, remember, you came in with 10 pieces of chocolate. When you come in here, what are you measuring at B? You got 10 pieces of chocolate, sure. Well, you've eaten 5 of them. You've eaten another 5 of them. How many do you have here at the end? You have 0, don't you? Look, you've started off with 10 pieces of chocolate, and at A, you've got zero pieces of chocolate. So this thing then is going to be measuring, well, 10 minus zero, which is just five, uh, 10 volts. So that means that actually is going to be our answer, is just going to be equal to 10.0 volts, and that's our answer. Now, you might wonder, well, what if I had placed a voltmeter here instead? So what if I placed one right here? What would I measure then? Well, had I done that, um, let's see, I come in with 10 pieces of chocolate, and let's pretend I chose this path instead, just the lower path. Do you see I only passed through one resistor? So that means I'm going to eat all of them here. I'm going to measure 10 volts here. So if I've got a voltmeter right here, it'll measure 10 volts. If I've got a voltmeter across A and B, it'll also measure 10 volts. But if I had a voltmeter across just this resistor, it'll be 5 volts. This one would be 5 volts. And over here, this one here would be 10 volts. So just to explain what would happen here, depending on what you measured. But again, you just have to look at the question really, really carefully. In this case, we just cared about the potential difference across A and B. That means we only consider coming in as what, leaving as what, and that's your answer. That's why we call it a potential difference, right? There's a difference in chocolate.